I decided to do something very daring this morning. I decided to take a risk because the weather forecast for this area today was rainy with lots of showers across the whole area. Despite that, I decided to take a risk and hang my washing out on the line. Unfortunately, we did have some rain. Although, having said that, the afternoon was lovely and sunny. So, in the end, my risk paid off. It was successful. My washing is now lovely and dry. What about you? Do you ever take risks? Would you describe yourself as a risk taker? The thing that follows next is definitely not risky. In fact, it would be fair to say that it is lovely and safe because it's Wednesday night here in the UK. It's just after 10 o'clock and this is Late and Live English. Yes, we are back live. It is a Wednesday night, as the guy on your screen just said. Yes, we are here once again. Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you OK? I hope so. Are you happy well are you happy i really really hope so here we go again wednesday has arrived we have made it halfway through the week how has your week been my week has been so busy for those who were watching last week you will know that we had a special guest staying this week so my studio was taken to pieces everything was changed here in the studio everything was altered all of my studio was packed away and then we had a special guest arrive it was of course mr steve's mum we had a lovely week and the weather here was incredible so i must say mr steve's mother picked a very good week to come here it has been a good week and the weather today was a little strange in the morning a little unsettled we had lots of rain this morning unfortunately as i mentioned earlier but my washing is dry so i took the risk i put my washing outside to dry and i took the risk and the risk paid off because this afternoon it was very sunny and all of my wet washing dried out so the risk did pay off but what about you do you like taking risks would you describe yourself as a person who likes to take risks are you a daring person if someone is very daring they will try things that Maybe they haven't done before or maybe they will try something that is considered as dangerous, maybe, or risky. So what about you? Do you ever take risks? Oh, the weather today has been a little unsettled. But tonight, oh, tonight, the weather was lovely. We had a lovely sunny evening and there you can see the garden tonight. As the sun was going down and it was a beautiful evening there you can see many of the plants many of the flowers are now coming out in bloom they are blooming <laughs> you can see in the distance there you can see some slight yellow blossom on the laburnum tree laburnum and there you can see some lovely bluebells. Oh, aren't they lovely? So lots of bluebells are out at the moment. In fact, they are a little late this year. They normally come out at the beginning of spring, but they are a little late this year. But I really love bluebells. They are 
very attractive plants very beautiful flowers I don't think they smell they don't really have a scent as such but they still are very nice flowers indeed so there are some bluebells and look look what I noticed today look the rhododendron is finally coming out so the flowers on my lovely rhododendron brush my rhododendron has decided to start flowering if a plant flowers it means that the lovely petals come out so flower can be a kind of verb so there we go the rhododendron this is a lovely pink rhododendron and the thing to remember about this particular plant is that they can grow to a very large size you can get absolutely huge rhododendrons you can they can grow to amazing sizes now this is not a rhododendron I think this particular flower is a petunia I hope someone will correct me if I'm wrong I don't mind being wrong but I think this particular flower is called a petunia <laughs> anyway according to Steve because Steve said that is a petunia so so if I'm wrong then Mr. Steve is wrong as well. Oh, look, there's a little bumblebee buzzing around. Oh, isn't that lovely? So summer has definitely arrived because the bees are now busy collecting all of the pollen so they can go back to their hives and make some delicious honey for Mr. Duncan's sandwiches. Isn't that lovely? So they're a lovely little bee collecting some of the honey it is a very busy bee a bit like me really because I've been a very busy bee this week I've been doing all sorts of things including taking my studio to pieces and rebuilding it today because mr. Steve's mum went back home last night so today I've spent literally the whole day building and rebuilding my studio there you can see the beautiful lilac bush in my garden and right now there is a lovely scent coming from this particular bush <gasps> oh I love the smell of lilac do you do you like the smell of lilac and there it is an overall view of the garden a very nice evening here in the UK we have had a beautiful week the perfect week for mr. Steve's mother to come and stay and she had a wonderful time we did a lot of things we went exploring around much Wenlock we went to visit the old Abbey in much Wenlock and we had a super time and I'm hoping that Mr. Steve's mum will come back. She will return in maybe July or August for a few days. So it was a great time. We had a wonderful time. What about you? How has your week been? Has it been good? We are talking about lots of things tonight. First of all, do you ever take risks? Are you a person who likes to take risks? Are you a risk? taker do you ever do things that are risky maybe dangerous or maybe something that may or may not go wrong so if you do something that might result in something negative happening then we can call that a risk of course some risks are not dangerous whilst other risks definitely are so let's have a look at the live chat because we haven't done that yet <gasps> I can't forget the live chat because I will be told off in no uncertain terms hello to everyone Franco hello Franco hello Andy or should I say Annie 
hello Annie de grab I didn't see the rhododendron coming out but it is so beautiful yes oh you've never seen it before oh yes it's a wonderful plant very beautiful Francisco says you have a very splendid backyard thank you very much for that it is a beautiful garden and it takes a lot of care it takes a lot of work <laughs> trust me Andrew we have a web resource here called planetarium and there you can find all of the names of the plants oh plantarium <laughs> not a planetarium sorry that's my, my mistake a plantarium where you can find all of the names of the plants you can put a picture of an unknown plant to your plant to be recognized oh that's a good idea is that an app is that is that a kind of phone app I think it is Tias is here hello Tias I think you were first tonight weren't you on the live chat I think you were actually first tonight Garcia says I am not a risk taker I don't like to take risks some people do you see they get a lot of excitement and quite a thrill from taking risks doing things that are dangerous the flower's name is the same it is lilac or lilac yes lilac you are right thank you nezrin yes it has the same sound as the turkish word for lilac thank you very much for that jeff one Z is here hello there to you Adele is here Pedro it wouldn't be a live stream without Pedro Belmont life is a risk you are right Pedro it is hi Mr Duncan I'm sitting right now in the backyard of my house in the country and I'm really enjoying the quiet night and your speech as well thank you Valentine for that thank you very much and I hope you have a lovely evening in your back yard or back garden Hamzali says hello hello Hamzali is it your first time here if it is please let me know Yaneth says hi Mr Duncan we are listening in El Salvador thank you very much Yaneth Mirian is here hello Mr Duncan my week is being very nice it has been my week has been nice the impression I have is that nobody wants new things or to take risks because they are afraid to lose popularity well one of the things that might be seen as risky is expressing an opinion yes so maybe if you express your own opinion and other people don't accept your opinion then that can be a risk Sergio is here hello Sergio or Sergio hello Mr Duncan the most important flower in my country is the orchid <gasps> yes orchids are lovely they are very beautiful it is the national flower and there is a wide variety of them variety so there are many different types of orchid Pedro says Mr Duncan are you able to liberate are you able to liberate forgiveness I have been a very bad student and I admit I need your forgiveness oh don't worry Pedro we are all friends here so yes I forgive you for whatever it is you've done <laughs> Belkis hello Belkis hi Mr Duncan thanks for helping us to improve our English skills watching you now right now from Colombia Belkis welcome Belkis and if it's your first time today talking on the live chat please let me know Tias Gosia watching in Poland apparently in Poland the lilac is called Bez oh okay I did not know that 
Hamzali says this is the first time to watch you live well all I can say is welcome Hamzali welcome to the live chat and I'm here every single Wednesday and of course I'm here every single Sunday as well would you like to have a look at the times <laughs> have I got them here I know I know what I'll do I'll put them on the screen here they come so these are the times right now on the screen you will see that I am with you on Sunday from 2 p.m. UK time and every Wednesday as you can see now I am here live on Wednesday from 10 p.m. UK time and that's what is happening right here on the live chat right now you can also make a donation to my PayPal if you want to help support the work that I do because everything I do is given away for free including the live chat it does not cost you anything to watch my live streams or of course my many many video lessons as well talking of donations can I say thank you very much to some people let's have a look here we go we have some people to thank can I say a big thank you to my new patreon I have a new patreon ding by thank you very much for your first donation on patreon thank you very much and also a big thank you as well to all my other patreons as well thank you very much and if you would like to add your name to the list all you have to do is give a small donation every month to help my work continue and a big thank you as well to Irina Irina for your lovely PayPal donation that I received last night I was very surprised so thank you very much for your lovely donation arena and if you wish to give a donation on PayPal it is very easy to do you you don't have to give all of your details because I know nowadays the problem is a lot of people don't like giving their details over the internet so with PayPal all you have to do is have a PayPal account and you use that it's very very easy so there is the information now under the screen for those who wish to give a donation to help my work continue because I have been doing this for over 11 years I'm not joking I've been doing this for over 11 years with lots and lots of English lessons the live chat is still very very busy oh hello there hello to Roaf hello to Hassan thank you very much I'm requesting you to record new videos about conversation and daily English and grammar thanks a lot Haviz says hello Mr Duncan my name is Haviz or Haviz from Sudan now I know that I have a lot of people watching in Sudan because when I check my statistics on my YouTube channel I can see that I have quite a few people watching in Sudan so a big hello to you Nicole is here I love flowers very much Mr Duncan you have magnificent flowers in your garden well I'm very happy at the moment because all of the flowers have just started to come out including my lovely rhododendron so my rhododendron now is starting to bloom and I'm very pleased about that very pleased indeed talking of plants I have a mystery plant to show you would you like to have a look at the mystery plant here it comes here is the mystery plant so this is something for you to scratch your head and think about for a few moments what is this plant so there it is the mystery plant now this is something that Mr Steve was given last year one of his work colleagues gave him this plant 
so if you were watching last year you might actually know <laughs> you might actually already know what this plant is so there it is looking very green it has just started to grow for this season so what plant is that when mr steve arrives in around about five minutes time i will get mr steve to give you the answer to the question because to be honest with you this is actually mr steve's plant it's not my plant so there it is the mystery plant what is it what is the mystery plant if you think you know what it is then all you have to do is tell me on the live chat yes it's as simple as that we have mr steve coming a little bit later on yes mr steve he's on his way in around about five minutes time <laughs> It is late and live on a Wednesday night. It's Mr. Duncan. That's me. And tonight we are asking some questions. Do you ever take risks? Of course, life is full of risks. When you step out the house every morning, there are many things that can go wrong with your day. So perhaps even just going outside for a walk can be very risky. So do you ever take risks? One thing in particular might be investing money. Maybe you invest money on the stock market. So you might find that that might be seen as something that is very risky. So do you ever take risks? Do you ever take risks in your daily life? You might do something dangerous, maybe a dangerous sport, maybe something that might cause harm or even even death. Oh, my goodness. So do you ever do something? Do you ever do anything that is seen as risky? If you do, let me know. Another thing I'm going to ask later is, do you ever watch television documentaries? So a documentary is something that is talking about a factual event or something that is happening or has happened over the past year, five years, 10 years, or maybe even 100 years. So documentaries, information programs, programs that give you information about factual events, real events things real situations so that's another thing i'm going to ask later on so mr steve will be here soon i have a feeling he is on his way to take us there i'm going to show you now an excerpt from one of my full english lessons just to give you an idea of the sorts of things that i do here right here on youtube it's true full english number 14 and then hopefully mr steve will be here cows in a field all being good cows in a field chewing the cud to chew the cud as an idiom means to talk about general things in a friendly way or to consider something carefully. You are chewing the cud. Just like this cow. These cows seem very friendly, don't you think?
Can you see what I have on my back? It is a very useful thing for carrying stuff around on walks in. It is a backpack. A backpack helps to keep your hands free while carrying things. You put stuff in your backpack so you don't have to carry anything in your hands. A backpack can be small and lightweight or it can be very large and hold many things. Hikers often use backpacks so as to allow them to carry many items at once. Safety equipment, waterproof clothing, survival gear or even a fold-away tent can be carried on your back using a backpack. The most common type of backpack looks like this. Something not too large and not too small. Very convenient for when you have lots of things to carry. You can carry a small backpack over both shoulders or just over one. Some backpacks even have wheels on them so they can be pulled around like a trolley. A backpack can also be called a rucksack. You are not going to believe what I'm about to say, but say it, I will. Most native speakers of English make mistakes while using the language. That is to say, in their day-to-day -day use of English. There are many reasons for this. First, there is the consideration of the accent being used. Some English accents clip or alter the way in which English is used. This applies to both British and American English speakers. The speed at which some people speak English changes the sound of certain words. If you add accent and speed together, then you will get a very different sounding version of English. From a grammatical point of view, mistakes are often made by native speakers. Double negatives such as I didn't do nothing are common in everyday speech. The use of certain words can also lead to mistakes being made. Confusion between words such as historic and historical, affect and affect, allude and elude assume and presume. These are just some examples of common mistakes made by native English speakers. Then there is the spelling of certain words. Native English speakers will often spell certain words incorrectly. Good examples of this include amount, fascinate, necessary, Definitely, achieve, acknowledge, success, imitate, familiar, scissors and vacuum. There are of course many others. My point here is that even though a person speaks and uses English as their first language, they will still be prone to making the occasional mistake. It would be fair to say that on a daily basis, very few native English speakers get it right all the time. And that includes me. It is possible to have time on your hands. To have time on your hands means that you have plenty of spare time. You are doing nothing at the moment. You have lots of time on your hands. We can ask a person, do you have time to see me? Could you spare some time for me next week? When are you free? To be free is to have spare time. The word spare can also be a verb. 
to spare some time is to make sure you will be free. You offer your time to someone. At a certain time, you will be free and available. Time ticks by. It never stops. Time marches on. The time and the place is when and where. To run out of time is when all things come to an end. You are out of time. It's a Wednesday night and everything's all right. It certainly is all right now because, yes, he is here. He's arrived looking so happy because he's spent a few days with his mummy. Yes, we are talking Mr. Steve. Hello. Oh. <laughs> he's deafened Hello, me. Hello, everyone. And welcome to my show. Oh, yeah, you're at Mr. Duncan's show. Sorry. <laughs> you, know, you know, one of these weeks, Steve is going to actually introduce himself without shouting into my ear. Because you don't need to shout, Steve. You're not on a stage now. And I'm just talking normally. Anyway, today we're talking about uh, uses of the word set. Uh, Jeff mentioned it. I noticed it. And Jeff. Jeff, Jeff one Z has Jeff. said, are we talking about set? Jeff, my dear friend Jeff, can I just say something right now? We are not. I repeat, we are not talking about uses of the word set because we don't have time. We don't have time. We don't have time, Steve. I must obey you, Mr. Duncan. You don't have to obey you me. You are in charge. Yes, well, that's true. So when are we going to talk about uses of the word set? I don't know. Someday, someday it will happen. Oh, I will right. have to set a date. <laughs> We've got one in. We've talked about uses of the word set. Mr. Duncan's just said one. Ha, ha, ha. Right, we have the live chat because Steve was getting very excited. Oh, yes. So on the live chat, let me just see if I can scroll down because when I did this last week, it was an absolute disaster. No, let me scroll back. That's not going to work. Oh, Ooh. let's just see if. Oh, there we go. Thank goodness for that. Yes, I noticed. Uh, Belarusia. Belarusia has got anemia. Bela Poor you. Belarusia. Thank you very much for letting us know uh, and give us giving us something very personal there. So yes. th thanks for sharing it. I am late today. I've been to the doctor and she diagnosed me with anemia. So what's yes. that, Steve? Oh, that means that uh, as uh, Belarusia said there, you've got a lack of iron. Uh, a lack of iron in your body and you, your red blood cells, the, uh, the, the cells that make your, your blood red, need iron. Uh, otherwise, they can't carry oxygen around the blood efficiently. Um, and uh, it's part of, part of their uh, construction. They need lots of iron. And uh, actually, it's strange enough, incidentally, uh, it's men very... It's it's much more common in women to get anemia than it is men because uh, oh. women obviously at certain times of the month lose lose blood and uh, that can build up over a number of years and you can lose iron out of your body. So anemia is can be quite a problem, I think, in quite a high percentage of, uh, of women. I've heard as well during pregnancy, uh, peop uh, women can get uh, anemia as well during pregnancy. That's right, because the, obviously the demands on the body are a lot greater. Uh, I'm no expert in this, but uh, obviously if you're making a new life inside you, then uh, you're going to, and that, that baby inside is going to need iron to make the red blood cells as well. And uh, so, yes, if you do lots of exercise, if you're like a sports person, you use more iron because your red blood cells get turned over. Uh, when I say turned over, you use up more red blood cells. 
so yes it's it's quite a common problem particularly in women so you never you never really think about this though I think a lot of people I bet you a lot of people are anemic and don't even realize it they just think they're under the weather and they don't even realize they are anemic yes feeling tired uh, it's one of the symptoms if you might get a bit out of breath sometimes you might look a bit pale um, skin might be a bit pale particularly if you're a white person with white skin anyway you might it's more easy to tell and doctors tend to look in your eyes you can tell by looking in your eyes I don't know what they're looking at uh, but you can tell that way so hopefully Belarusi you will get uh, well soon it takes quite a while for the body to uh, to co go back to normal after anemia it takes quite a while for the body to make new red blood cells mm. Uh, but yes, keep taking the tablets, as your doctor would say. Yes. So uh, is it serious? Well, it can be very serious if it's not diagnosed early enough. Yes, it can be serious, but it's easily corrected. Mm. Uh, and the doctor has obviously decided that uh, you need some uh, iron tablets. And that's the, uh, I believe, a common way. But the iron is in lots of foods, but it's very di it's difficult for the body to absorb iron. Mm. Um and it's a good idea to take vitamin C with it. So eat some fruit as well, because the body can't absorb iron without vitamin C. That's something I happen to know. Vitamin C is in, in uh, vegetables, leafy vegetables, potatoes, fruit, citrus fruits in particular. Hmm. So uh, the doc your doctor might have said take citrus fruits, vitamin C with, uh, with your meals as well. And that helps your body to absorb the iron. Yeah. Well, even I'm learning something here. Oh, I know everything, Mr. Dur <laughs> I know a lot. Well, I, I happen to know a few things about that. <laughs> uh, but yes, yeah. Keep taking the tablets and you'll be well soon. That's always uh, that's always the thing to do. Whatever the doctor says, you must follow your doctor's orders. Yes. <laughs> what are we going to say? Uh, MX25A has said they may, may need vitamin B12. That's a different type. There is a different type of anemia. Uh, where you've got a vitamin D, a vitamin B12 deficiency. Okay. But I think that's different to what Belarusi has got, which is an iron, a lack of iron, which is it's very easy for women to become anemic. Mm. Um, uh, it's not necessarily due to a poor diet at all. It's just that because women tend to use, lose more iron than men. Yes. Uh, then uh, it's it's easy over it happens over a long period of time so the demands on a female uh, the female or the, the woman's body is is much more than on a male that's right that's it because they have to constantly uh, they have lots of changes during the month and that means that their body is constantly doing all sorts of things Lo you're losing lo they lose a lot more iron than, than men do in fact men can tend to build iron up in their body oh uh if you eat too much red meat and that there is there can be a problem where you have too much iron oh my goodness uh, in your body uh because once it's in there your body can't get rid of it <laughs> so that's, so, uh, that's that, strange isn't it so so with like with everything you think you've got enough but also you can have too much yes you can you can have too much iron yes <laughs> Uh, you can have too much vitamin D as well. You can have too much vitamin A, uh, the two vitamins that build up in in your liver. Uh, so you, you, certain vitamins you shouldn't supplement on unless you've got a problem. Yes. Because they can build up in your body. And this is something that's happened over recent times because people have become more, I want mm. to say, obsessed. They are. They have become obsessed. Let's be honest. In fact, sorry, and they're th taking more sort of vitamin pills and things that they don't really need to take. They are, and w with iron, they don't really recommend you take iron. A lot of vitamin supplements now don't have iron in them because, uh, unless you need iron, you shouldn't definitely shouldn't be taking it as mm. a supplement unless you've got a medical condition like Belarusia there, which will which will correct the problem. Uh, very easy to control. So we wish you well with that. Yes. Uh, yeah. And uh, you'll be doing marathons. Yes. Uh, in I don't know <laughs> in why. a few months' it's, time. I, I don't know. I don't know why that's worthy of a shout. <laughs> well, I'm just talking normally. Yes, that's not really normal talking. Uh, it is. Tonight, I talk about this all the time. Tonight we're talking about do you ever take risks? Now I know Steve is not a person who takes risks. Now I took a risk. I know what Steve 
is thinking now because he knows what I'm going to say next I did take a risk I decided to take a risk when I went to work in China I suppose leaving home traveling thousands of miles to take up a, a job uh, and, and you, you knew nothing about where you were going or what was expected of you so yes I suppose that might be a risk what about you Steve do you like taking risks I take risks on the road uh, yes, uh, and somebody mentioned, I can't remember who it was now, said that, uh, said that you, because it's gone past now, uh, that in business you need to take risks. Uh, and you ha you do need to take a bit of risk in life, uh, otherwise, you, you, otherwise you, don't, you don't achieve your full potential. And you can take risks that are measured risks. In, in other words, it's a risk, but you, you always know there's... The, that's, there's a way out of it or it's not going to be a total disaster mm. uh, uh, as long as you've got a fallback plan i.e. you've got some 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 other plan to fall back on if it goes wrong mm. but we do need to take risks in life yes. I mean you take a risk with this yes uh, we take risks going live because we could say something that we're not supposed to say or, or we could look silly uh, this is something I've said before about doing live streaming anything that's live and spontaneous there is always an element of danger or risk and as I said earlier just stepping out of your door in the morning you are taking a risk because there are all sorts of things around you that could be described as hazards actually one of the uh, the biggest risks that most of us take in our day to day I mean unless you're I mean, risky things are things like, you know, parachuting <laughs> or, or dangerous sports, bungee jumping. Uh, if you do things like that, that there is a, a risk. And a lot of people like to do take a risk because it gives them a buzz, gives them an adrenaline fix. Uh, but um, a, a, a lot of a lot of things uh, you know you, you can you can I forgot I lost my train of thought you see there was a risk I started a sentence and I didn't didn't know where I was going to go with it well the other <laughs> the other risk that I mentioned Steve was of course financial risk financial uh, so risk. maybe you invest money on the stock market or you you gamble your money maybe you like to bet on the horses or maybe you like to go to the casino so you might yes. call that risky so Certainly where money is concerned, a lot of people do take risks. So might, maybe they invest money in their business. So if you have a business and you invest money in it or into it, you put money into your business, maybe your business will go wrong and fail and you lose all of your money. Yes, sometimes, sometimes that happens. But uh, uh, hello from Exeter. We've got somebody there. Oh. Wilson Cheng is in Exeter, which is a, a town in England. Hello, Wilson Cheng. Thanks hello. for joining us. Yes. yes. I hope you will be very well soon. Oh, thank you, Anna. That is Anna sending a lovely message to Belarusia, Belarusia. Belarusia who's not feeling too well. I don't like to hear of my students being under the weather. We have a mystery plant tonight, ah. Mr. Steve, a mystery plant. Is it the one in the middle? <laughs> well, it's not on the screen yet. There oh. it is. So oh. there is the mystery plant. Now, I know you know what it is. So this is the plant that was given to you last year by one of your work colleagues. That's right. And it's one of those amazing plants that will will die away in the winter and then regenerate in the spring so it's uh, an annual flower perennial oh perennial oh mr steve is correcting me there perennial perennial which means it comes up year after year after year so what's an annual plant an annual plant is a plant that only lasts for a year oh i see so you plant the seed it grows it flowers it seeds and then it dies <laughs> oh, and the new plants only come from the seeds See, it's strange, though, because something that's annual to me is always yearly. Yes. So an annual report. So it happens every year. So that's can I just say that's a little bit confusing for those who don't know a lot about plants. I always thought that an annual plant was one that came up every year. But in fact, it's perennial. Perennial, which means every year. 
where it's an annual plant, as I said. Uh, you grow it from seed. Lots of lots of weeds that you see around are annual and what they call annuals. Uh, they just they in one season they will that the seeds will grow. They'll flower. They'll produce new seed, and they'll the seeds will be scattered, and then the the main plant dies, uh, and then the new uh, seedlings come again in the spring. Oh, I, I wasn't sure if you're going to lose your train of thought again there. No, not this time. I've got a, this plant here you're looking at now is not fully grown yet. Yeah, this I, I did mention that this has just started to grow again. Just after, started to grow again. But it, it's it's a, also a plant that, that needs a lot of maintenance as well. You have to take a lot of care of these plants. Uh, so so at the end of the season, you have to treat them in a certain way. You have to make sure that they stay stored. I could give a clue. Um, OK, give give a clue, not a big clue. I'll give a clue. OK. It's a, it's a tuber. Oh, OK. It, that... The plant has a tuber. Uh, Isn't that a type of... Underground mus... tuber that's a type in of, the soil. That's a type of musical instrument. T-U-B-E-R. So oh. you can... That, that, that gives you a clue. Uh, a definite clue. A definite and clue. It has, yes, it has nice flowers ornamental flowers okay so yes um sue cat says a perennial loses its leaves is that right yes yes we are definitely yes oh, okay uh well yes exactly so the difference is with a perennial it will lose its leaves but something that the root will still be alive or the stem might still be alive but it will regenerate again from its roots uh, in the in the spring, uh, whereas the annual plant will completely die away, the leaves, the stem, the roots, they'll all die, and the the new plants only come from the seed. Oh. And lots of weeds that you see growing around are are like that. Yes. Uh, I'm just trying to think of a common one. One we've got in the garden, busy Lizzie. Ah. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, I, li I like the Busy Lizzie. Busy Lizzie plant. Nice little blue flowers. <laughs> but it's an annual, so you have to put you have to put new seed in every year uh, because the plants won't come back from the roots. Busy Lizzie's are lovely because they spread very quickly and, and they've got these lovely, beautiful, bluish, bluish flowers. They're very nice and they spread very quickly. Yes. My, my grandmother used to have a lot of busy lizzies in her garden. She loved them so much and she used to tend to them every year. So she had lots of borders with lots of busy lizzies. Yes. They self they self seed. Yes. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> it's okay, Steve. It sounds like Steve maybe <laughs> needs to go to the doctor. <laughs> Miriam says there many economists recommend to invest in a private pension. Oh. What about it? Private pensions. Now, this is something you know a little bit about because because, well, let's just say that you are thinking about <laughs> the, that part of your life as yes. you, as you approach a certain age. Yes. Well, it's 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 too late to start thinking about a pension when you're starting to, when you're 10 years off retiring. Hmm. Uh, if you I, I'll tell you something and I, I didn't take too much notice of this and I read a book in my 20s. If you put away 10 percent of your wages um, and save it in, in a safe pension scheme uh, and you did that for and you worked for 30 or 40 years, 40 years, you'd have enough. You'd probably be a millionaire. Wow. You'd probably have saved enough money in 40 years to be able to retire. Uh, very early so you can 10 15 percent of your wages if you can save that much every year just put it in uh well it depends what country you're in it's difficult it's difficult to to, to say i'm not i'm not a financial advisor by any means <laughs> I'm, <laughs> so, I'm, I'm i'm starting uh, to notice that <laughs> but uh, yeah if you save 10 to 15 percent of you uh, of what you earn uh, however way you want to do that if you want to do it, it depends what see some stock markets in certain countries it would be very risky but certainly in Europe England America places like that 
uh, fairly safe over over 20, 30, 40 years. You, you're going to get your money back and more and you'll probably be able to retire at 50. Oh, dear. There we go. I, was, I didn't take that advice. That's why I'm still working. That's it. <laughs> but it's no good saving for a pension when you're in your mid 50s. It's too late. Yes, it's too late. But there are lots of these 50 plus plans now. There's a lot of companies now allowing you to start saving for. I suppose it's a bit like life insurance or maybe a pension. So something that may be paid to you. A lot of people now, of course, are, are putting their house as 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 a way of securing money when they're old so maybe they own their own house and then they put their back their money or, or their <laughs> their house and they give it to the bank and then the bank will give them money so when when they die the bank automatically takes their house from them or, or they take part of the value of the house so there are many ways of investing in your future now many more ways than used that's, to exist that's called equity release equity so the equity is the thing that you have equity is the value of the uh, of mm. your property yes and if you're short of money in retirement you can go and you've paid for your house you already you can go to your bank and say i'm short of money uh, I want to sell 20 percent of my house to, or 50 percent of my house to you. And then when I die, you have half the house. Mm. Uh, but of course, a lot of people won't want to do that because uh, if they've got children, they'll want to probably leave that to their to their uh, their children. It's, yes. it's quite good if you've got no children and you don't want to leave money to anyone. Yes. Then uh, you could say to the bank, you can have it all when I die. Give me the money. That's it. <laughs> Equity yes. release. But it it's. It's very costly yes, way of borrowing money. You do you do end up paying for it somehow. Uh, may, may, maybe you pay for it after you're dead, uh, uh, and maybe your children will lose out as well. Jeff, oh go on. Wait there a second. I, a lot of people asking about Busy Lizzie. There it is, Busy Lizzie. I hope I've spelt it right. Busy as in very busy, and Lizzie as in the name oh. Elizabeth. So busy Lizzie. There it is for those who were asking for the actual spelling. There it is, a beautiful flower that grows everywhere around the garden. It might be B-I-Z-Z-Y. Really? I think it might be, but oh, okay. uh, I, I, I can't, we'd need to Google that. OK, I'm going to put busy just in case. Here we go. Just in case. That doesn't seem it might right. might be I-E. I think it's oh for goodness uh, sake Steve make your mind up so it might be that but I, I think it's busy Lizzie maybe someone can google it for but us it, it will come up check. anyway it will come up anyway if you even if you search and you Plant. spell it if you sp spell it incorrectly it will still give you the alternative or the correct yes. spelling that's the beautiful thing now about the internet it will even correct you when you're wrong <laughs> I like that so we have the live chat, lots of people talking about risk tonight. Connell mm. says, I think I took a risk when I accepted the marriage proposal after <laughs> after a month of our acquaintance. Oh, I see. So you only knew the person for one month and then they asked to marry you Wow! Af after just four weeks. Wow. All I can say is. They must have really, really liked you. They must have they must have really felt in love with you. That's all I can say. But so you do hear of people doing that. Sometimes they meet somebody and within days they've asked them to marry them because they just know that's the right person for them. Is the mystery plant a hydrangea? Ah, no, it's not. But, but, but they actually another nice plant. Hydrangeas are very nice. But again, they take a lot of maintenance. It does. <laughs> at this, uh, what Nicole, yes, I can see why you've said that. The leaves at this stage of the plant and the size of it, you could mistake it for a hydrangea. So there it is again. But it's not fully grown. That's the key thing. It, it's going to get a lot taller than that. It's going to get maybe about four or five foot tall. OK, I will give you another clue. And this is a flower. This is a plant that produces many, many flowers. So and this is something I noticed last year. I couldn't believe how many flowers this plant produces. So every time the flowers wither away, some new 
some new flowers actually grow and take their place it's incredible so i was really really impressed by just Ga how many flowers this produces Ga garcia eagle uh it's uh, ch it's just tuber so you just t-u-b-e-r you don't want the osa on the end that's that's the type of plant it is it's a it's a plant with under the ground it has a tuber which is a, a fleshy mass from which the plant uh, springs back to life in the in the uh, that's it there it is uh, in the spring tuber uh, it stores water in there the, the plant i think and uh, and then all the leaves shrivel away in 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 the winter and you have to keep this plant is very susceptible uh, very susceptible to frost so it doesn't like cold weather so uh, in the the plant is actually i think it's from it may be from south america it's certainly from a hot country uh where it you don't get any frost uh because in england to to have these plants on display in your garden you can't keep them out during the winter you have to dig up the tuber which is a big mass under the ground mm. and store it uh somewhere where it won't go below freezing point you know, you know what you know what Otherwise these plants the, the roots on these plants always remind me of potatoes they look like the tuber <laughs> does look like a big potato because a potato itself is a type of tuber it, uh, as I understand it, it. it is you yeah. are right yes uh, so it is in fact a potato is is in fact the class the classification of potato I know this is tuber they so it tuber. is a type of tuber and we eat the tuber yes we actually eat so we, we're, we're basically eating the root of the plant it's it's a way of the plant uh, uh, I think it stores uh, stores water and nutrients mm. in the tuber which and would then, uh, which would explain why potatoes are so good for you i think so and you can't keep potato i wonder if potatoes are uh, you can't keep potato tubers uh in the cold they have to be stored in uh, above freezing because is is well. it is it a chrysanthemum a chrysanthemum that's another that's another horrible horrible flower to actually spell when i was at school they would always ask us to spell chrysanthemum and also rhododendron horrible horrible words <laughs> it, it's not a chrysanthemum uh, uh, but it's that kind of plant that's used for ornamental purposes in a garden so mm. it's used as a sort of a show-off plant mm. very showy sort of plant to have in your garden yes and you normally have them in uh, in you don't normally put them in the ground you normally have them in pots so displayed so your your work colleague is crazy about this particular yes. type of plant. He's crazy about them and he has them all over the place. So so he gave you one of his, them last year. Now, I think we might We've got a winner. We might have a correct answer. Oh, we do. Oh, ah. <laughs> I must say Nicole and Sukat are very active tonight. Very active. <laughs> but the winner is oh yes it looks like nicole nicole has got it it said that word is pronounced dahlia 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 so, so you have actually spelt it right it does have an h in it yes, yes. day Day dahlia <laughs> but you don't actually pronounce the h so it's just dahlia <laughs> nicole was so sure that further down she's asked again <laughs> oh i see <laughs> Uh, is it a dahlia it is a dahlia yes. yes so here it is for those who are wondering the plant in question is a dahlia and it has beautiful flowers absolutely stunning flowers stunning flowers this particular and, and there are different types of dahlia and they all have different colored flowers this one is a is a deep red one but you get some that are orange some that are blue the, the and it continually flowers throughout the summer, uh, whereas a lot of plants, they just flower and then they're gone. Whereas the dahlia will flower for like two or three months. So there it is, a dahlia. And when this comes into flower, when the flowers start being produced, I will show you the result. I will show ah. you this. 
particular plant in full bloom. Raffia full says dahlia, as in Portuguese. It may well be. Uh, it is from a hot country. It does come from a hot country, so it could well be from Portugal, somewhere like that. Yeah, so dahlia, as in Portuguese. So, yes, it, mm. it, it, it might. So you think it might come from a place called dahlia? Oh, it could be, yes. yes it could so, be. Yes, because sometimes... Oh, plants, well, that's not spelled correctly. No, sometimes... Well, it might be... That might be the spelling in Portuguese. It could be, ah, yes. Ah, you see? So there we go. Yes, yellow plants. And you can get sort of hybrid plants where they... You get... Uh, and sometimes the flowers, you get double double or two colours in the same flower. That's that, That's unusual, isn't it? Yes, but sometimes it'll be red tinged tinged with orange. You might get red and orange in the same same flower. The flower heads are quite big. They're about that big. Yes, yes. They uh, they, they they really they bloom out and they look at, they look magnificent. But yes. as I said earlier, when 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 the flower fades away, new ones take its place. Yes, uh, it's, a, it's a very so for the whole year. You just get new flowers coming out, whereas with with normal plants, they just go. Hello, and then they wither away and die. It's not the dahlia. They're mm. hard. They take a lot of effort, hard work, because you've got to take them up in, in the, at the end of uh, autumn and store them somewhere safe away from frost, and then you've got to put them back in. You've got to put stakes, sort of canes in to support the flowers. They need a lot of water. Uh, but, you know... They look lovely and it's worth the effort if you like plants. They get lots of, they, they attract, the flowers themselves attract a lot of insects. Mm. And you get loads of flies and, and earwigs. Oh, I see. Little beetly things all, all like to live in the flowers. There's a whole, yes. whole little ecosystem going on. This is the thing I noticed last year when, I, when we visited your friend. And I, I, he said that... They, they, you do need to take a lot of care of them. So if you have lots of them, I, I think you spend most of your time taking care of the dahlias, to be honest. You oh. just mentioned insects, didn't you? We're going to have a look at a very interesting insect in a oh, moment. Right. I used to have one dahlia, but sadly winter came along and it died. Yes, they will die if you don't store the root indoors you have to take it indoors or else the, the cold weather and the frost will just destroy it you have to, yes you have to dig it up and uh, store it somewhere away from the frost so uh, but uh, and they don't uh, and they they don't like wet conditions either yes. when they're not growing you see what nicole said there yes i had many dahlias but the snails love to eat dahlia leaves yes <laughs> yes that, that's <laughs> all <laughs> That's why it's it's quite a good idea to keep them in a in, in a pot in a in a pot uh, on your patio or near your so then you can you, you the, the snails can't get to it. That's it, and also you can move them around. <laughs> so if you, you see the snails around. coming, if the, if you see the snails coming from far away, you can actually you have plenty of time to move the pot, so the snails can never get to them because the snails move so slowly. You see. So you, you, you always have time to move them, you see. Mr. Duncan. <laughs> so here we go. Here's a very interesting insect. For those who don't Ooh. like... No, it's not on screen yet. Oh. <laughs> Steve, I love it when Steve reacts, but the thing isn't on the screen yet. It's, it's just on the preview. So Steve can see things before you. <laughs> but I just love the way you react before it actually appears on the screen. Just in case anyone thinks you're having a seizure. It looks hideous. That's a me I, oh this is this is my new friend this is this is this is Boris this is Boris the beetle and this was sitting on my step the other day but you're not going to believe what this is called now this has two names this particular beetle isn't that just beautiful what a stunning creature how big is it give us some idea because on that it it could be it looks like it's about two foot long well you will see in a minute because uh, you will see my finger uh, approach the insect <laughs> but this has the most amazing name well it has two names in fact it's moving it's common name yes it's moving because oh. i'm i'm nearby it is called 
the may beetle and there is my finger giving it an, oh look i'm stroking it do you mm. see oh i'm giving it a little little stroke he seems to like it as well isn't that nice that's my new friend that's boris the beetle so it's called a may beetle a may beetle but also it can be called a, a cockchafer <laughs> I, I am not joking you're joking Mr. i Duncan. am not joking it's on the screen it's on the screen there so the other name it has is cockchafer mm -hmm. I, I i i can't even imagine i can't even begin to imagine how it got that name but that is its alternate name but most people know it as a may beetle but it's it's also called the it's also called a cockchafer. Maybe if you get them inside your pants, it uh, it chafes your <laughs> something. I, if we chafe something, okay, can then we explain what that means. Uh, well, well, I'm, I'm about to. Oh, I'm, okay. you see, I'm about to. Oh. Yes, you see. So the apparently the name comes from its movement because it's oh. a very erratic insect, and if you've ever seen them fly around. They make a very loud buzzing noise. They make a sort of noise. So oh, when they go past, you can really hear them. But they don't seem to have a very good sense of direction because they always bang into objects. And we, we often when we're sitting outside during the summer, you can hear these banging into the window and they really do clunk, clunk into the window or even against the wall of the house. So <laughs> they are very, very, uh, they're, they're not the most careful of creatures. So, so what do they come? So it's May now, obviously. Is that, what, is that when they start to come out? I would imagine that's when they start to come out. They normally appear around May and early June. So that's when they are most abundant. Um, so there mm. it is once again, the May beetle. Do we know? Look at the claws on its legs. Do we know what it eats? It eats insects it eats insects yes it's it, carnivorous yes it feeds on insects and so not plants then not plants as far as i'm aware it's not plants so uh, it's a carnivorous beetle i think they aren't they aren't considered dangerous but they can be a pest oh oh no wait there a second i've just remembered they do eat leaves ah they eat um especially crops and apparently in some parts of the uk every year they get lots of these invading their fields and they, they, they can be a real pest. So the May beetle does eat uh, vegetables. It's it's not carnivorous. I'm wrong. Yes, for a moment there. So it doesn't eat it doesn't eat other animals at all, other insects. No. at all. then. And it certainly doesn't eat humans. It looks as if it might be very dangerous, but it isn't. Apparently, it's very harmless to humans. That's good to know. So. Uh, Otherwise, you could have you could have got your finger bitten off there, Mr. Duncan. Yes, but I was stroking it. It seems to be enjoying it. Look, oh, isn't that lovely? He's well, having he's having a lovely afternoon there. I'm well, the interesting thing is, why was it just sitting there on the step? I think it was tired. I think. It, do you think it was just hatched out and it was a bit tired? I'm not sure. Because it looks very clean and new. It's an amazing creature. I, I think it's a beautiful, beautiful Look at those creature. Claws on the end of its feet. Yes, it's gone now. By oh. the way, <laughs> it's gone off the screen now. Oh yes. Steve is still admiring the preview. So yes, <laughs> yes, it's it's wonderful, but no one else can see it, unfortunately. Oh, we just saw it. Talking of seeing things, we have the live chat. Oh my goodness. How beautiful it is to take many photographs. I love to take photos of all kinds of creatures. Thank you, Sue Cat, for that. Is it a cannibal? As far as I know, it isn't. Um, I, I, I did make a mistake. I, I thought it ate other insects, but apparently it eats leaves. Well, a cannibal is something that eats the, 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 the it, it eats its own. Yes. So uh, if you talk about cannibals a human cannibal Ew. is somebody that eats other human beings yes so a cannibal eats its own, own eats kind its own kind but i always find this quite interesting when we talk about birds of prey because birds of prey eat other birds so technically even though they're not eating their own species they are still eating other birds so mm. 
are they cannibals or are they not cannibals because birds as far as i'm aware are birds so a blackbird or a robin or a chaffinch or <laughs> um a, a vulture or an eagle or around here we get lots of buzzards so during the day you can see the buzzards circling in the sky and sometimes you can hear them calling and we have sparrow hawks and they all eat other birds but i think it, the definition of a cannibal mm. we'd have to look this up would be we have to eat its own kind yes so a buzzard would have to eat another buzzard uh but uh, to be called a cannibal mm. you'd have to eat exactly its own kind its own yes. species but it's not far off uh, though is it it's not far off no because <laughs> we've there's only there aren't different types of humans there's only one human uh species so yes. uh, uh if we you know if we're cannibals we, we can only eat other humans but i mean we eat other animals yes there aren't any other species of human being so that's it i suppose yes uh, that might be the reason why we don't eat monkeys or um any 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 creature like that because they yes. do resemble exactly if you mm. ate a monkey well yes some countries eat monkeys uh in fact there there's a problem in some countries with monkeys populations uh dying out because uh, they're considered uh, a delicacy don't tell mr lomax about this he'll be no. very upset mr lomax won't like this uh nicole we think uh, Mr. Duncan believes it's not a carnivore. A carnivore is something that eats uh, uh, meat. meat or flesh. We think it's vegetarian. Oh, well, maybe Nicole uh, has found out. Ah, oh, maybe she uh, has. But, uh, oh, it's a carnivore. It is, is it? Oh, well, as I understood. Oh, oh so uh, <laughs> was I right the first time? <laughs> maybe you were. In Japan, we can see the same kind of insect. It has a shining green color. Yes, in in certain light, it does look it does look different. But yes, you're right. I th I think actually it comes from um, overseas anyway. I, d I don't think it's it's native of this country. I think it's it's actually made its way over here. It's some, it's some as I understand it. I, again, I might be wrong. Um, in Japan, we can see this kind of insects yes thank you mika nice to see you here tonight by the way a big hello to japan rifle or rifle apparently monkeys are eaten in the amazon by indians yes so, that, 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 i've seen that on Amazon the television. amazonian indians oh my goodness probably they've always eaten them you know it's perfectly normal for them to eat monkeys well that's uh, it you see I'd imagine because they've probably been eating them for thousands of years yes. One person's sweet as another's sour. So just because one person doesn't do something, it doesn't mean that you don't have to do it either. So, yes, it's it's the way it happens sometimes there in the know. world. Shadi has said there that, uh, of course, the uh, good example of a cannibal in the insect world is a spider. Yes. The female spider uh, eats the male. Yes, it. after they've uh, after they've uh, copulated copulated yes uh, as, uh, that is mated after yes well then, after yes. after mating <laughs> does does anyone still use the word copulate they do in uh, really in natural history really I've I you know I can't remember the last time I heard anyone I've never heard David Attenborough say copulate I've heard him say mate they reproduce or mate mated yes. <laughs> i can't imagine i can't well, imagine uh, <laughs> they... shardy used the word there that that technically that is the correct word the two insects get together as they prepare to copulate wow <laughs> no <laughs> i don't yes, think yes. so the, 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 the yeah the, the the male spider has to be quick to get away you know sir david attenborough was 92 last week wow that is incredible sir david attenborough 92 last week that's in oh my god I, I don't know if he feels old but i feel old knowing that he is 92 to be honest have you seen the video with an eagle and a parachute where the eagle bumped into 
the least I don't know what you mean by that do you mean that the eagle bumped into the person who was the eagle had a parachute um, maybe the eagle had a parachute yes maybe maybe it had some emergency yes its wings were it's getting a bit tired so it just deployed its parachute hello I'm very late I'm sorry but better late than never as mr. Duncan says thank you Manuel welcome we are here for just a few more moments and then we are gone but don't forget we are back on Sunday live as live can be from 2 p.m. UK time so risk taking I, I, I've always thought that mr. Steve was not the type of person to take risks even though he said sometimes he takes he takes risks in the car which he sh you should not do ever oh excuse me less so now <laughs> I've got the burps I've got the burps a I, bit of wind I tell you what happened l l earlier I I, I, w I was eating my eggs I had poached eggs and so did mr. Steve and then about half an hour afterwards I had terrible indigestion I don't know why all of the acid was coming up from my eggs and beans eggs and beans that that, that that's <laughs> a combination which is uh, is guaranteed to give you indigestion I, I'm starting to get the feeling that indigestion indigestion is a sort of illness that people get when they get older so I think a lot of people as they get older they get more problems with with acid and indigestion so I, I had terrible terrible indigestion tonight I'm sure you're all really pleased to hear that Shadi says there that you can still use and uh, you must know something about this uh, I still use the word copulate in <laughs> zoology and paleontology it, ju it just doesn't sound like a word that you would hear nowadays I don't study. know so what do you do for a living that's interesting I, I, I do you study fossils that's paleontology isn't mm. it and uh, and zoology um, so yes uh, so yes the word is still used uh, but not that commonly uh, you wouldn't say it to your wife or husband would you you wouldn't say what's the matter why are you looking at me oh, oh sorry I'm, I'm just studying an old fossil <laughs> thanks for that mr. Duncan that felt sweet as I was saying you wouldn't say to your uh, your wife or your husband or your girlfriend or your boyfriend oh I'm in the mood tonight let's copulate no I don't <laughs> think I've, I don't think anyone would say that maybe a zoologist would yes or well, a paleontologist do you, do you mean if two zoologists were about to make passionate love and they said let's copulate oh dear maybe. I think I think that would be a bit of a passion killer maybe be. it's a turn on to uh, to uh, zoologists and paleontologists I don't think so somehow mm. <laughs> <laughs> it, it would appear yeah, that Pedro. Su Sue cat really does want you to watch Petrolicious but we haven't watched yes. any of it no, yet we haven't let's write it down but there is a good reason for it well Petrolicious I will I will remember it don't worry but we've had a very busy week because we haven't even mentioned Mr. Steve's mum Petrolicious write it down Mr. Steve's mother I want to watch that Mr. Steve's mother was here this week and we had the most amazing time because the weather was incredible I don't know what happened I think your mum must have bought I think she brought the weather with her that's what the neighbors said yes it's incredible and, and a beautiful beautiful day three out days. we had three days of gorgeous weather and then your mother went yesterday yes and then this morning it was raining it was raining and it's cold again yes so I think so please please Steve's mum can you please come back and please don't forget to bring the sunshine with you as well we try to persuade her to appear <laughs> oh on camera oh but she was too shy that's a song isn't it yes you're going to sing it now no uh, uh, who was it by too shy it was by uh kajagoogoo kajagoogoo you too you're too shy shy hush hush i do i i liked kajagoogoo but uh, i liked i liked them you know, mr duncan knows what i'm going to say now when limar left and nick beggs took over the vocals he's got an amazing voice and he's a very good guitar player and that's uh, I love their album 
uh, I think it was called Island Life or something like that. Uh, was it called that? I don't Islands. know. Islands. It was called Islands. I, I stopped. It was slated by the critics, but I loved it. Yes. Anyway, that's back in the early 1980s. You know what? No one cares about Kajagoogoo. You listen. Look up Kajagoogoo and listen to their album, Islands. No, don't. Oh, it's very good. I don't. like their hair. Uh, right. Geology department. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I work as a demonstrator in the university at the Faculty of Science. Oh. So I'm basically a teacher. But still working mm. on my masters, says oh, Shardy. Fantastic, Shardy. Yeah, thank you, right. Shardy. I, I love biology and science. I used to love doing chemistry experiments when I was younger. Yes, we know. And uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, so you tell us every time we're on. Kindred spirits <laughs> is the word. Yes. Kindred spirits, people who have got a shared interest in something. Yeah. Kindred spirits. Yeah. Connected. Connected. You've got. Connect, a, you've got connected a, by an interest. Connected by an interest. There we go. <laughs> well, that was fascinating. Well, that was scintillating. Well, I just thought I'd meant I'd mentioned the word, so I thought I'd explain that it. That was too exciting for me. That was. And uh, Sue Cat, husband, and I are kindred spirits, and maybe Sue Cat as well, because we we like cars, and we're going to watch what's the name of the program again? Petrolicious. Petrolicious. We're going to watch that. I thought you could write it down. Well, I thought you said you could remember it. Well, I did. I did okay. remember it. So I was right. I did remember it. Hi from Brazil. <laughs> hello from Brazil. Danielle. Hello. Danielle says hello from Brazil. A big hello to you as well. Is it your first time? Have you visited Australia? I've never been there for one good reason. I could never, ever stand. I could never do the flight. I could never fly all the way to Australia. It would take far too long. And I think I would go absolutely crazy if I did it. I really would. So, no, I've never been to Australia. The only thing that puts me off, the only thing that discourages me is the long flight. But apparently you can get a flight now directly to Australia, but it still takes about 17 hours. Have they got that? Have they, have they actually done? Have they got that new plane that goes all the way there? Uh, well, wasn't it a few days ago? They did it, didn't they? Did they? Uh, oh, I knew it was coming, but yes. I didn't know it was happening right. I thought we watched it together. Oh, I didn't think it was ready yet. Oh, I see. I I, no, I thought this was this Maybe was this was uh, some sort of uh, prelude to, to a service that would get you. But but you still have another five or six hours to fly from from where it lands. I think it's Perth. So what they're doing is they're taking the shortest possible route. So even though it's ah. non-stop, you still have to get on another plane and fly to the other side to of Australia. To get to Sydney. To, to fly to the other side of Australia, which which is still many hours because Australia is is huge. It's it's hard to appreciate just how big Australia is it's massive I had some friends that went on holiday to Australia and they said they spent most of the holiday either in aeroplanes or trains or yes. in cars because oh. to get to anywhere it just took forever it's like America really yes it's uh, it's a bit like being in China you see you, you can't get anywhere quickly in China you can't oh that's interesting uh, Raphael. Oh, not Raphael. Sorry. Sukat. No, not Sukat either. <laughs> what, what am I doing here? Am I having a seizure? I love your curtains. Manuel was the person I was trying. To. Oh, yeah. I love your haircut. I recognize your your icon. Yes. I love your curtains, Mr. Duncan. Are they the same as your as your first video? They are the same style, but not exactly the same curtains. But yes, you're right. The curtains behind me are the same style as my first lesson, lesson one, yes. which, which now has over 12 million views. <laughs> my goodness. And well, where are you from? With a name like that, are you Spanish? I think he might be Spanish. In fact, the the little icon looks like someone from uh, maybe Spaniel. I'm, I'm maybe. getting a bit of renaissance there. <laughs> 
Italiano. <laughs> bit of Renaissance coming through there. Greetings from Peru. I'm getting and a... we had we had a we we've, we've got a vet a veterinarian living in Iraq. A veterinarian. Yes. I can You've got to be clever to be a, a vet. I can see now why they always shorten it to vet because veterinarian is very hard to say. <laughs> so if you if you're a, if you're a veterinarian, do you not like the word? Do you not like to be called a vet? Is it? Do you prefer to be called a veterinarian? Should, shouldn't it be veterinarian? Veter, veterinarian, or is that an old person? Veter, veterinarian. I think it's actually pronounced veter, veter, veterinarian. That, yes, that's the reason why they shorten it to vet because it's so hard to pronounce. Yes. I th I think so. <laughs> so what's a what, what's a, a veterinary a veterinarian? That's that that's somebody who is uh, an old person, isn't it? A I've veteran. Known. A veteran. A veteran. A, vet a, veteran, a veteran is a per well. A veteran is a person who's been been through something or, or has experience of something. So maybe. Uh, we, we say a, a, a veteran from the war or a veteran yes. from the the yes. uh, a certain yeah, period of time. Yeah. So, yes, a veteran. Uh, well, a good example, of course, is Vietnam War, the Vietnam veterans. So people who fought in the Vietnam War. So, yes, veterans, a person who has done something for a long time or has experience you of. are a veteran of teaching <laughs> english mr duncan oh dear you have done it for a long time you're a veteran a veteran english teacher on youtube now i really do feel old and what an interesting moment of time to finish the live stream are we finishing we are going to go italy there we go <laughs> fantoni i thought that was italian yes Thank well, you for telling us. I got it right as well. We like to guess. I so got we it. were half right. I got it right. Do I get a prize? <laughs> so we're back on Sunday talking about lots of things, including rare coins. In Are your, we? In we're your, talking about rare coins yes, on Sunday. Yes, rare coins. That's what we're talking about. Because, Ooh. and I will tell you why, because here in the UK, we do something very strange now and again with our, with our money. And we, we make limited editions or limited versions of the coins that we use in our everyday life and i think i have three very valuable coins really i think so i'm not sure you've never told me about this before well i've been hiding them away just in case is this your pension fund this is my equity <laughs> i i might need to release the equity i don't know when maybe soon or maybe later who knows so, yes, we'll be talking about coins. So do you do the same thing in your country? Do you have special coins that are only available or only made in, in limited numbers? And I will explain more about that on Sunday. Also, maybe talk about risk taking again. What about rare stamps. Well, rare stamps. We saw a program about stamps the other day. It was very interesting. <laughs> Doesn't sound like it would be. Oh, I was falling but, asleep. Uh, Stamp collecting is not interesting. I saw a very interesting program about it. You, I never what? thought I would be interested in stamp collecting. Philately. Philately. Yes. Philately. Well done, Mr. Duncan. Yes. I was wondering whether you'd come up with that. He was uh, a friend of mine at school, Phil Atterley. And he was also a stamp well, collector. Be careful how you pronounce that because it was can a... come out all wrong. Why? I'm not going to say why. No, explain, please. No. I'm not no, sure. No, I don't no. know what you mean. No, it's, it's rude. <laughs> Bitcoin. No, we're not going to talk about bitcoins. No, not Bitcoin. B Bitcoin. Bitcoins. Uh, cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency. No, none of that. The value of that is uh, is is certainly not rare. No. Uh, okay. If you're a, you're now there's a risk. Talking about risk. If you're somebody who likes taking risk, you will you would be somebody who would invest in bitcoins. Or cryptocurrencies because are they going to become a, a, a main currency their, their value is dropping falling right you would have I would have a heart attack if I put money into bitcoins because they they, they started from nothing they went up very high now they've crashed I don't know what they're doing at the moment well, that's no risk. one's well no one's talking about bitcoins anymore because it, we've all moved on at the moment all we're talking about at the moment is the royal wedding so the royal wedding is coming this weekend. I won't be watching it because I have no interest in it 
whatsoever. Ah, but other people might. Yes, I didn't say they didn't, did I? So we should talk about it because if other people might be interested in what we think, well, we know what you think about well, it. Well, we'll be talking about it on Sunday because it'll be the day after, but we won't be talking about it on Saturday because we're not here. And I certainly won't be watching it. I think we're going into town to have our lovely meal. Are we? Uh, on Saturday, I think so. Fernando, commemorative coins. That's right. That's another. Yes, they might be commemorative, use. but these are normal. These are normal coins that are just spent normally in the shops. So Julia says, I found oh. today Peter Rabbit 50p and all I have and I have all the Olympic coin collection. Oh, Ooh. well, save that for Sunday because we're talking about that. Sue Cat's grandfather collected stamps, a philatelist. Philatelist. Yeah. I would, have you got the stamps? It'd be very interesting. <laughs> I don't think Steve wants to go. I, I said I'll only be, I want to go to bed early tonight, I said. But once I've got going, that's it. The energy's going. The adrenaline is pumping. It certainly is. <laughs> I can see it running down your leg. Oh, no, that's something else. Dangerous bitcoins. Yes, they can be risky. We are talking about risk. At least we have been because we're going now. It's time to say goodbye. Oh, Julia's got a street party. Maybe but we haven't got an invite. Oh, you're having <laughs> it on Sunday. Oh, Sunday. Not Saturday because street. the wedding is on Saturday, not Sunday. Mm. Maybe maybe you're having the street party for me. What's the street party for, Julia? I'm interested now. Julia, what is the street party for? I can't. I can't stand the tension. Please tell us. Is it for the royal wedding? Because if so, it's a day late. <laughs> it can't be. I think so. Jeff says goodbye. And also. Every central bank's coin. Such small. I don't know what that means. If sorry, got, sorry, Sergio. <laughs> if you have coins, of course, and you want to display them. You would set them in a mount. No, you wouldn't. Yes, you would. No, You'd you wouldn't. Set the coins. I don't know what you're talking set about. Set them. No, uh, it's time to go. That's just for Jeff. I know what I know what Steve's trying it's to do. Use of the word set. Steve is trying to sneak a definition of set into my live stream. You can't. You can't. So I'm looking forward to seeing your valuable coins. Yes, on Sunday that's happening. So we will see you on Sunday. Mr. Steve is going now. It is for the royal wedding. Oh, it is. But it's on Sunday. Maybe they're celebrating afterwards. Oh, I see. Because the they want to watch the wedding on Saturday. OK. And then have a party afterwards. Yes. Is the father going to turn up, though? This is what we want to know. Who cares? Does anyone care? You know, I predicted all of this months ago. I was talking to people and if I might have even mentioned it on, on my, one of my live streams months and months ago. I said that there is going to be an issue with the father because no one has, has really talked about him. And I said there will be some sort of issue or some sort of problem. And there we go. There Julie is, is in Walthamstow. Walthamstow. Oh, not having a party. That's uh, that's near. Should we go? Is that near London? We could just we could gate crash the party. That's, that's near London. It's down near old Apple and We've Pears. We've invited. Look at that. But but it's a bit far to go. We we live about 160 miles away. I don't know where Walthamstow is. I can't. It's know. near London. Is it? Is it near London? Anyway, you're doing your live stream. It's up the old Apple and Pears. Well, have a lovely party. <laughs> and uh, I I Mr Duncan's not not keen on the royal family. But I, I'm sort of OK. I'm not well, going to watch it. It's not that I'm not keen on the royal family. What, what I, I kind of object to, and I don't want to get political here, but I do object to having 10 years of being told that we can't have any money or any increase in, in wages or spending on health care. And then suddenly all of the people in this country who pay tax have to then fund a royal wedding with 
lots and lots of posh people and eating posh food and eating from gold plates <laughs> when we plate when we've had 10 years of, of being told that we can't have any money any extra money no more spending there are cutbacks and all sorts of things and then we have a royal wedding last year the Queen of England was given 46 46 million pounds to That's renovate Buckingham Palace well it is a national guess, building really. guess where that money came from but 46 million it sounds a lot of money but it in is the a grand uh, scheme of things in there if you look at the big picture yes so, so is it is it a lot so of don't money? forget every every time a new a new baby a new royal baby hatches out you're getting controversial now Mr. every Duncan. time a new royal baby hatches out they push another one out we have to pay for that we have to pay for that it comes out of our tax yes but you have to also take into account how much money and income is generated Ugh. from tourism mm. from the royal family mm. thousands millions of people mm. come to london every year to yes. go to buckingham palace yes which generates a lot of income for a lot of people go up the government a lot of people go up mount snowden as well yeah but that doesn't generate income for it, the economy it, it does well for for wales they've got a train that goes all the way to the top Mr. Duncan, and you can see you can see our house. Apparently, if you go to the top of Mount Snowdon and you, and you look in a certain direction with binoculars, you can actually see our house. So if you ever go up to the top of Mount Snowdon and, and you, you, you look across, can you can you give me a wave? please? Fernando's right. It's important for tourism. Oh, it is. Yes, I think that they think make they generate. I'm not saying this because I'm a royalist I think you're I think you're missing but, my point uh, <laughs> completely I think yes I think they should pay for for a, 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 anyway let's not get into that subject no I think it's because I, we're about to I, go and we want to end on a happy but note. the problem is I think Steve is missing my point and the point is that they're, they're saying to the average person in the street that you can't have your health care and, and you can't have this and you can't have that we're cutting back everything but we can always find money for a new royal baby to feed. Isn't that strange? And when the Queen wants Buckingham Palace all making, oh, I've got to rebuild that. It's us. We have to pay for that. So there you go. I will get off my soapbox and I will say, see you on Sunday. Uh, that's, we ought not to end like that. Oh, OK. It seems a bit, uh, let's cheer things up a bit, shall we? <laughs> Well, that's really cheered me up. <laughs> so there's Mr. Steve looking really happy. We can tell that those aren't Steve's teeth because they they're not yellow. And I will. <laughs> I will see. <laughs> I will see you on Sunday. We're going now. Sue Cat's voting for you. I really do have to go because I think I've got deep vein thrombosis in my legs. Oh, you're going to wear some stockings for that. Can you, you look at my feet? They're, they're, they're going blue. Look. That's look, the socks. Look at my feet. Look, look. And, and do you like the new carpet? I, I have a new carpet now in the studio. Have you, have it, you been it, it, looks, it looks just like grass. Isn't have it? you been squashing my well-mown grass down? No, that's in the studio. No, that's, it isn't. Mr. That's now. That look, look down. There's grass on the floor. Isn't <laughs> that great? I think you're tricking people. I'm not tricking anyone. And you've been flattening my grass blades. <laughs> Right, we're off. <laughs> are you OK? Are you, so you're coming back on Sunday, are you? Sunday? No, I won't be here on Sunday. Why not? I've got a rehearsal. So what, what am I going to do? For you're all on your own again. What am I going to do for two hours? I'm not going on the roof again. I, I, need, can't, I can't wait for this show to be over. To I can't be go on the roof again. I, nearly, I, I might fall off. I'm not here the following. Oh, yes, I will be here the following Sunday. Or will I? Yes, I will be. Oh, OK, then that's great. Well, I will be here on Sunday, but Steve won't be. No, so, I so can't be. He won't be getting to see my valuable coins. You won't be seeing them at all, Steve. You'll have to tell me and where he's hiding them. Oh, OK. So that I can sell them. OK. So, sorry, I won't be here on Sunday. OK, Steve, off you go then. Steve is going now. 
Bye bye. Bye bye from Mr. Steve is going. See you later, Steve. What do you want me to do? Bye. <laughs> I'm going to show a dahlia. There we go. Steve's going now. He's leaving the studio. And there it is. Today's mystery plant for those who didn't get it right. And those who are still wondering, it was a dahlia. There it is. Dahlia. That is it. We did end on a rather controversial note, but I will be back on Sunday and it looks as if I'm on my own. Isn't that isn't that a bit sad, don't you think? It's not very nice, is it? Thanks a lot for your company for the past hour and 45 minutes. I've been standing here talking to you. This is Mr. Duncan in the birthplace of English saying see you on Sunday, 2 p.m. UK time. And of course, you know what's coming next. Yes, you do. What is coming next? Ta-ta for now. <laughs>